Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a health challenge that you or a loved one may be dealing with and you don't know where to begin, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or skin health issues, or if you have questions about formulations or ingredients or something you may have heard about or read about in the news, 844-236-6010 is our number. Likewise, if you have a success story or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side today and every day. If you'd like to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. And of course, you can also just get your products at the wholesale price. Call 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. Or you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, and you can order products or sign up right off the website. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel or Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, if you're dealing with eczema or rashes or you have a burn or a cut or scrape or uh, some kind of wound that you don't want to have that you don't want to have to deal with a scarring you want our truth omega-6 healing cream designed it for plastic surgery it's available at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com and make sure you take a look at our bone broth protein high aluronic acid rich bone broth protein if you can't or you don't have time to deal with making your own bone broth, you can get the bone broth protein. It's great to travel with. It tastes awesome, easy to use, and it's pretty darn inexpensive considering all the stuff you get in bone broth protein, including high hyaluronic acid and glucosamine and chondroitin and all of the amino acids that are responsible for helping build cartilage and connective tissue. You can find out all about that one at brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. We're going to be talking to Jordan Rubin tomorrow, the formulator of the bone broth protein. And we'll be talking about bone broth, and we'll also probably end up talking about uh, some of Jordan's other expertises, expertises, including probiotics and the gut. That'll be tomorrow on the bright side. Okay, welcome back, folks. We're talking the ketogenic diet. I absolutely love this way of eating, high-fat, low-carb way of eating that's pretty much the ultimate weight loss diet, the ultimate anti-diabetic diet, the ultimate anti-aging diet, the ultimate brain health diet, the ultimate athletic performance diet, the ultimate anti-cancer diet. What more do you want from a way of eating? You get everything with the ketogenic diet, or as I like to call it, the modified ketogenic diet. It started off as an anti-seizure diet. This idea of avoiding bread, cereals, and grains, fruit juices to optimize health is something we talk about in this program a lot, but 
for most people, present company excluded, if you're listening to this program, you're not included in this, but for most people out there who aren't hip to nutrition, this is a radical departure. The idea of not eating fruit or not drinking fruit juices or of limiting your intake of fruits or grains or cereals or breads. We live in this carb crazy culture and the idea of avoiding them, avoiding carbohydrates, even though it is tried and true and scientifically verified is still shocking to the mainstream. All you got to do is look at the food pyramid or the food plate or whatever form the latest government sponsored eating guidelines take and you'll see that the vast majority of calories that we're supposed to be eating according to the government are carbohydrates, grains and fruits and vegetables. Three quarters of the latest food plate, grains and fruits and vegetables. Yet for over 100 years, we've known scientifically that the ketogenic, low-carb way of eating improves all, and I mean all, markers of health. Yesterday, we left the program off talking about a Canadian scientist named Wilhelmar Stephenson. He reported on his experiences back at the uh, turn of the 20th century of eating mostly meat and fat for nine years when he was living with the Inuit Eskimos. He was a historian and a, and a behavioral scientist from, from Canada. And, he was, uh, his deal was uh, hanging out with the Inuit and seeing how they lived their lives and reporting back on it. And he wrote that he ate their food. He ate their diet for nine years, which was a, a meat and fat diet. And these days, you know, we've all heard of low carb. Most people have heard of low carb. But back then, that was considered to be a crazy idea. It was heretical. It was life-threatening. When Stephenson came back and reported his findings, scientists called him a quack and a liar. So he had himself subjected to a scientific experiment where he duplicated the diet, the, the Eskimo diet that he had subsisted on for nine years. He duplicated it while being closely monitored, monitored in a hospital by scientists. He ate organ meat, he ate fish, he ate bone broth. The bone broth gave him uh, the electrolytes that he needed. He ate over 200 grams of fat a day. That's nearly half a pound of fat. He ate 115 grams of protein and less than 10 grams of carbs, two teaspoons full of carbohydrates. Not from veggies and fruits, by the way, not from grains either. He, the carbs that Stephenson got were from the meat and the fish he was eating. So we're talking here three quarters of a pound of fat and protein a day and two teaspoonfuls of carbohydrates from the meat and the fish. That's a big time ketogenic diet, folks. So what happens to Stephenson? Does he pass out and convulse and lay around in bed all day and, and not do anything because he has low energy? No, the contrary. Not only was he not tired all day, but he had more stamina, he lost weight, and his gum disease went away, and he stopped losing his hair. Now, back in those days, we were just starting to understand vitamins and what exactly was in food. It's hard for us to imagine, but just a mere four or five generations ago, we didn't know vitamins existed. Vitamins and, and the components of food, the macronutrients from food, that is the carbohydrates and the, and the, uh, uh, the uh, protein and the fats that make up our foods, really weren't discovered until the late 18th, early 19th century. So back then, our understanding of food was kind of primitive. We knew, we kind of knew what was in the foods, but we certainly didn't really have a handle on the biochemical processes, processes that were going on in the body in response to the food. And as today, uh, uh, same way as, as it is today, throughout history, back at the turn of the century and throughout scientific history, scientists don't know what they don't know. We, that's true about everybody. We don't know what we don't know. Unfortunately, scientists really know what they know. They don't know what they don't know, but they really know what they know. And everyone back then knew you needed carbs and knew you needed certain factors that were only found in veggies and fruits and grains if you were going to be healthy. And they had really ripped into this guy, Stephenson, for his claims that he could subsist on just meat and fat for years. So suffice it to say, when at the end of a year, Stephenson is feeling great, just eating meat and fat, they were completely blown away, completely shocked. They actually published their uh, findings in a, in a scientific paper in the Journal of Biological Sciences in, in 1930. But for some reason, it just never caught on, probably because of the profit margin that is associated with grains, and the economics of the grain business and lobbying. Carbs are way cheaper than protein and fat. You get much more profit margin when you're selling carbohydrates than you do with protein and fat. So the diet just never caught on. 
until very recently. And that's what the ketogenic diet is really all about. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time. And you can get us 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Got five years of archives plus a search engine. If you miss a program or you want to review a specific topic that we've talked about, we've covered all kinds of topics over the last five years here on the Bright Side. Head over to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. And of course, if you want to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com. And if you'd like to purchase our bone broth protein, go to brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. Okay, we're talking ketogenesis, the ketogenic diet way of generating these powerful compounds called ketones. Wilhelm R. Stephenson was a Canadian uh, historian, behavioralist, who studied the Eskimos, came back uh, from, uh, came back from uh, a nine or ten year, uh, spending nine or ten years with the Eskimos in, in the Arctic, eating what they ate, came back and told everybody that all he ate was meat and fat, and, and he was doing great, and they made him, uh, nobody believed him, so they did an experiment, they monitored him for a year where all he did was eat just meat and fat, a little bit of, very, very little bit of carbohydrates, and not only did he not keel over and die or get sick, he just actually, he felt great, had more stamina, better health, his gum disease went away, stopped losing his hair. This is the ketogenic diet, the high fat, moderate protein diet. We call it the ketogenic diet. I've said many, many times in this program, it is the ultimate health and longevity, wellness, anti-cancer, anti-aging way to consume food. It works so well because the way the body is designed, how the body processes fats and proteins as opposed to carbs, really is the key to energy generation. And it's all about energy. The body processes fats differently, and protein for that matter, differently than it it processes carbs. And this relationship between dietary fat and the production of ketones is what the ketogenic diet is all about. How the body processes fats generates these molecules called ketones, which gives us energy without engaging sugar chemistry, which in our culture today is one of the two major factors associated with our crappy state of health. Sugar metabolism along with digestion. That's the two bottom points on what I call the triangle of disease. Between digestive health issues and sugar metabolism issues, <clears throat> excuse me, you have the cause of almost all, uh, pretty much the cause. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say the cause of all chronic degenerative diseases at these two points of the digestive system and the blood sugar system. The, the adrenal glands and the thyroid are also involved, but even those are secondary. Those are the top point of the triangle. The base of the triangle is the digestive system and the blood sugar system. And this is so darn important because it simplifies everything you need to know about health, which can be a very overwhelming subject. But don't be overwhelmed and don't be bamboozled by crazy theories and products and advertisements and marketing. Work on your digestive system, stabilize your blood sugar, and almost every single marker of health is going to improve. The ketogenic diet works with the blood sugar system. It allows you to get energy without having to engage in your blood sugar chemistry. Ketones are easy to process energy, and once your body starts making them, and it takes a couple of weeks to become so-called keto-adapted, Maybe, maybe even more, maybe two to four weeks before your body has become a fat burner, especially if you spent your whole life being a sugar burner like most of us. Once you get going with fat burning, the body will start to generate these ketones and you'll feel better and you'll lose weight at the same time. This is, this is amazing. You can eat fat, you can eat mostly fat and lose weight when you're on the ketogenic diet because of how the body's chemistry works. Thus the fallacy, by the way, of the low fat diet, which doesn't help anybody. We've gone low fat now for 25 or 30 years. We've got all this low fat, low fat snacks and low fat candies and low fat cakes and low fat desserts. And everybody's fat because it's not about the fat that we eat. The body's chemistry is not as simple as you eat fat, get fat. The combination of low carb and high fat forces us to become fat burners. In other words, the more fat you eat, as long as you're keeping your carbs down, 
the more likely it's going to be, the easier it's going to be to generate for your body to generate energy from fat rather than from sugar. Under our ordinary eating conditions, the standard American diet, the SAD, which is just about the worst way you can eat if you want to be healthy. The standard American diet is just about the worst way to ingest your food if you decide to be healthy. This is why we're not healthy because we're all subsisting basically on the standard American diet. And this idea of ketogenesis, of generating ketones for energy, is especially important for the brain. It was actually developed for brain health, for seizure disorders. The ketogenic diet is the ideal way of eating for anyone who's confronting any brain health issues. Dementias, Parkinson's disease, palsies, um, uh, cognitive disorders, attention deficit disorder. If you have a brain health issue and you are serious about dealing with it, you absolutely positively have to start reading up or understanding or better yet using the ketogenic diet. The brain utilizes sugar and it can't really utilize fat for energy, but it can utilize ketones. That means when you're burning fat and generating ketones, your brain will get energized without sugar and make no mistake about it. There's no such thing as a cognitive brain health, health issue that does not involve some degree of dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. I don't care what it is. If you're serious, if you have Parkinson's disease or you know somebody and you or they are serious about reducing the symptoms of the Parkinson's disease or the Alzheimer's disease or any brain health issue, you absolutely have to use this ketogenic, ketogenic way of eating, ketogenesis. Brain cells can burn, uh, uh, typically they'll burn through sugar, but they can also use ketones. And again, this gives the brain a way of, genera generate, of generating energy, of using energy without having to deal with glycation or sugaring. So if you decide you want to start going ketogenic, if you decide, decide after listening to this program or reading up on the ketogenic diet that you want to go ketogenic, there's a couple things you're going to want to do. First of all, the ketogenic diet is not the paleo diet. They're different. The paleo diet is more protein-based. Ketogenic diet is fat-based, and this is really important because there's a, a certain misunderstanding about protein. Protein is actually anti-ketogenic. That's why the ketogenic diet is a moderate protein diet. You need your protein, absolutely. Protein is the building, blocks, uh, the building block of everything in the body. 80% or so of your body is made up of protein after you take the water out. So your body is mostly protein. Your cells are mostly protein. Protein does the work in the body and you can't really, you don't want to skimp on your protein, but you don't want to do too much because protein is anti-ketogenic. Protein actually can get turned into sugar and ultimately it can get turned into fat, a stored fat, because protein can get turned into sugar, especially when you're going low carb. If you decide to go low carb, but you eat a lot of protein, your body will ultimately turn that protein into sugar via a very fancy schmancy biochemical process called gluconeogenesis, making new glu gluconeogenesis, making glucose in a weird oddball sort of way that can make glucose from protein. So you've got to be a little bit careful with the protein. This is one, one reason why sometimes people will eat a lot of protein and gain weight, especially if you're eating a lot of protein, but you're not using it to build muscle. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about ketogenesis, weight loss, the skin health, the truth treatment skin health products, longevity products, bone broth protein, or anything we're talking about today, or if you just have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Got this uh, article from the Daily Mail sent to me by Christian. Three, uh, these sons reversed their father's diabetes by making him cut out pasta and bread. Fascinating. Where have you heard that before? The headline continues. So why does the NHS, which is the health service in, uh, in the UK, advise the complete opposite? I don't know. You tell me. Why does our government advise the complete opposite? If you have diabetes, you don't need to have diabetes. It's almost like it's voluntary. 
yes, it's almost like it's voluntary. If, even if you have it, it's reversible. Now, I suspect that a lot of you guys listening to this program, you understand that diabetes is reversible. But do you understand, do, do you know how many millions upon millions of people think that that's a crazy idea, that diabetes is reversible? Well, I'm here to tell you it is 100% reversible without drugs. It is simply a way that we process, what we call diabetes is simply a way we process foods. Once you change the way you eat and change the way you process foods, your diabetes will go away. And the ketogenic diet is an ideal way to do that. The ketogenic diet works by affecting hormones. It, that's the key, really. It's the hormones, specifically insulin and something called glucagon, which are our sugar metabolizing hormones. By changing the way we eat, we change the way our hormones are produced. This is the, the fallacy of the calories in, calories out idea that dietitians still talk about and that doctors still talk about. Oh, weight loss is just diets, uh, calories in, calories out. No, it's not. It's about hormones. It's about how the body processes the fats and the sugars and the calories. And this is the flaw in the calories in, calories out idea. We'll continue talking about the ketogenic diet. Well, tomorrow we'll talk about, uh, well, tomorrow we're going to talk to Jordan about bone broth protein and about probiotics and, and uh, digestive health. But then we're going to continue talking about the ketogenic diet, what to do if you want to start the ketogenic diet. We'll also tell you about some nutrients that you want to make sure you're using if you decide you want to leverage the ketogenic diet. All right, from... Uh, the journal Arthritis and Rheumatology, glucocorticoid, that is prednisone, prednisone use or glucocorticoid use ups diabetes risk in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, why would that be? Well, when you're under stress and your body's producing hormones or when you take hormones, steroid hormones that is, your body mobilizes sugar chemistry. This is why stress makes us fat. It's why cortisol makes us fat. It's why prednisone makes you fat. It's why prednisone will increase your, the odds of dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. It's why stress will increase the likelihood of messed up blood sugar. When we're under stress, our body puts sugar into the blood. Hormones are sent out, emergency hormones are sent out, and sugar goes into the blood when we're under stress. If you're trying to lose weight but you can't, no matter what you're doing, chances are pretty good you're a high cortisol producer. That means you're under a lot of stress, whether it's psychological stress, emotional stress, mental stress, or physiologic stress. And the study shows just that. Prednisone use, prednisone duplicates stress hormones. Did you know that prednisone is like telling your body it's under stress? This is just another reason for prednisone being one of the dumbest drugs ever, although in fairness, it does take away pain and it is anti-inflammatory, but the idea of giving your body stress hormones to mobilize stress chemistry it just exemplifies the stupidity of the pharmacomedical model, in my opinion. Here's another good one. Sleep apnea devices lower blood pressure. Hmm, interesting. This is from the Journal of the American Medical Association. Sleep apnea devices, devices that help you breathe, lower your blood pressure. What does that tell us? It tells us that if you want to lower your blood pressure, practice your deep breathing techniques, and it tells us that your hypertension could very well be caused by a problem with oxygenation, which of course triggers the stress response, our third point on the triangle of disease. There is a major connection between um, hypertension, high blood pressure, and problems breathing which is why when you take a hot bath, your blood pressure drops, which is why when you sit on the couch and practice deep breathing techniques, your blood pressure drops as well. Do you know antihypertensive drugs are among the deadliest drugs of all? Yeah, the drugs they give you for, anti -hyper, for uh, lowering your blood pressure, antihypertensive, most especially beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. Everybody with high blood pressure seems to be on metoprolol all these days. That is a nasty, nasty drug. They used to call low presser back when I was doing my, when I was working in, uh, in the retail pharmacy setting. Low presser was a, uh, a, a higher tech version of propranolol, Indorol. I've, I've told the story a lot about hyper, antihypertensives, how when I went to pharmacy school and we saw them, uh, one of the things we had to do was watch propaganda movies from the drug companies. This was mandatory for pharmacy students. You had to watch these propaganda movies. I can only imagine that doctors are doing the same thing. So we watched this propaganda movie by a company, uh, uh, the Ayerst Company, and the, I believe it was, or Wyeth, was one of the drug companies, and uh, the movie was, a, was about an hour movie, and it was talking about how this new drug, this new class of drugs was going to revolutionize the antihypertensive business. It was going to change the face of hypertension. This 
this new class of drugs. It was a beta blocker, and it worked by blocking the beta nervous system, which energizes the heart, basically killing the heart, or at least, or at least dumbing it down, at least turning it down. And so anyway, what really got my attention was the movie was an hour long, 15 minutes about how wonderful the drug was, and 45 minutes of some lady reading the side effects. Fast. She read a lot of side effects. 45 minutes of side effects and 15 minutes of benefits. And that's when I knew I was going to have a problem being a pharmacist. Beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. If you hear blocker in the word that's describing the class that your prescription drug is in, that's not a drug that you want to be on for a very long period of time, even if you may need it for extremely short periods to, until you get everything under control. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Let's go to Florida and say good morning to Angela. What's up, Angela? Good morning, Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's going on? Um, quick question for you. I've been dealing with this for about a month and a half now. Uh, it started after I took like a, a facial cream. It wasn't yours, but it was a retinol cream, like 0.05%. Okay. And it caused a lot of drying out. And especially to my lips, like I don't know how it got there. No, like, no, no. I'm not. I'm not buying that, Angela. It can cause drying out, certainly, but it wouldn't cause it in an area that you didn't put the product on. You didn't put it on your lips, I assume. Right, and right. all around no. like, the outer uh, part of my lips. You got something else going on, my dear. Now it's true that at retinol, and I think you're. Just, did, was it a prescription? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's Retin-A, it's a little different. And it's true that that can cause some dryness. And actually, it's a really nasty product, Retin-A. That's why I came up with my Retinol gel, is I wanted to match the potency of 0.05% uh, retinoic acid, which is what Retin-A is, without the crap. So Retin-A is a lousy formula. It does have 0.05% retinoic acid, which the ingredient is spectacular. Make no mistake about it, retinoic acid, which is the active form of vitamin A, is a spectacular ingredient. And it will cause dryness, and it will cause uh, some irritation, for some folks. However, if you can't use retinoic acid or for that matter retinol, the chances are pretty good that your, your body is deficient in, it, in two very important nutrients, which I'll tell you about when we come back from our break. And by the way, Angela, if your dry, lips are dry, the same is true. And I know quite a bit about the lips. I actually studied the lips specifically when I was working for the Blistex Corporation. That's where I learned skin care. So hang on, Angela. I'll let you know about these two nutrients that you need to be using and some other strategies for dealing with dry lips and dry skin when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Benny for 4236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Angela about the lips, dry lips and dry skin. Do you say dry skin also in your face, Angela? Uh, no, um, not Just dry on the skin. lips. I meant, yeah, it's very chapped. I meant to say that they're cracked and annoying. Th that's all a sign of uh, uh, two deficiencies in two major nutrients and maybe in how you process those nutrients. And these two nutrients are important to use if you're going to use retinol or retinoic acid and really get the good benefits. And that's vitamin A and essential fatty acids. Those are the two, uh, those are your two major strategies, <clears throat> excuse me, for dealing with cracked, uh, dry lips and dry skin in general. And if you try to use retinol and couldn't, chances are you're deficient. You're either deficient in the vitamins themselves and the essential fatty acids, or you're not processing them or absorbing them. And as we've said so many times in this program, as we get older, one of the first things that happens is we start to lose the ability to, to, uh, to leverage, to assimilate fats and fatty vitamins, fat, essential fatty acids and fatty vitamins. So if I were you, my dear, a couple things. First of all, I would be uh, working on digestive health, making sure I had no absorption issues. That's always the first thing to do. Probiotics play a major role in, in fat absorption. And a lot of folks don't recognize this. This is not appreciated as much as it should be. Uh, good bacteria, fermented foods, fiber, all of which provide an environment or support uh, the probiotics, the bacterial flora that live in the gut. That's step number one always, really always for everything, but particularly if you're dealing with, uh, with dry skin or cracked lips. Also, bile salts might help you. Lecithin with your meals might help you. 
uh, apple cider vinegar with your meals, digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzy enzymes for longevity can help you. Stimulating bile secretion at the beginning of meals with bitters, arugula, uh, radish, anything that's bitter, dandelion greens will stimulate bile secretion. All of these have a positive effect, will have a positive effect on fat utilization. Uh, you can take extra bile salts or extra pancreatic enzymes. And then you want to start using your fats, and that would be 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day and uh, nine of the ultimate EFA capsules a day. If you want to use something topically, I would be using topical vitamin C, fatty vitamin C, like my omega-6 healing cream. Uh, if you want, you can also take a vitamin A capsule and, and pierce it with a little pin and put that straight uh, straight on your lips. That's retinyl palmitate, which is, a, which is a, in a fish oil base usually. Uh, you can also do the same thing with vitamin E. That's not quite as effective, but it, it might work too. Um, but I like my fat-soluble Truth Omega-6 healing cream, fat-soluble vitamin C. And that's what I'd be focusing on. Not so much a, not so much a topical one, but uh, topical, topical strategies. But uh, they can help. Mostly it's the internal and the internal fats. And the last thing you want to do, Angela, is put a waxy, heavy product on your lips. Because that will guarantee that you will be completely addicted to that waxy product. And that's one of the sneaky little tricks about the lip business, the lip, lip salve business. And for that matter, the skincare business is when we seal the surface of the lips or we seal the surface of the skin, we actually suppress the production of our own moisture factors. And this assures that you will be completely addicted to a product and millions upon millions upon millions, billions of dollars are spent and are, are, are uh, uh, enjoyed by people selling us products, <clears throat> excuse me, selling us products that suppress our, our natural moisture factor. It's literally called, by the way, the natural moisture factor and it's rich found in abundance in the lips and the uh, skin is also uh, uh, dense with the natural moisture factor but the more moisturizer you use if it's a waxy moisturizer or waxy lip product the less uh, less able your uh, skin will be or your lips will be to make that natural moisture factor does that help Angela do we still have Angela Yes. Did we lose? Thank Are you. you. Okay, thank you, Angela. Take care. Have a beautiful day. Okay, let's move on to Austin, Texas, and welcome Scott to the bright side. What's up, Scott? Hi, Ben. Uh, just uh, want to thank you for all the work you do. Been listening to your show for a while. Um, nice. Trying to help out my wife with some adrenal thyroid issues that she has. Okay. Um, been trying a number of strategies, and she's getting a little bit better. Um, one that's made the biggest difference for her, though, was trying the Himalayan salt in warm nice. water. Oh, that's and awesome. And I told her what you said that, you know, try some while it tastes delicious, and she did. She's like, that tastes great. Um, isn't, it, that was one. isn't that amazing? <laughs> it tastes so good. And, and all it is it, is salt it, water. Do you know why it tastes so good, Scott? Do you know Do you know why it tastes so good? No, I don't. Because you need the stuff. <laughs> Your body craves it. So it's the way it's set up is that when we need something, it's going to taste good to us. And that's why when we're low blood sugar, we want more sugar. So, but the the irony of the low salt of the uh, this Himalayan salt strategy is, it's not only super delicious, and not only does it uh, fly in the face of everything we're taught, but it's also a ridiculously cheap way to take care of your adrenal glands. A little bit of Himalayan salt, and then you and then you're not going to want the pretzels or the potato chips or the other crappy crappy salty chemical chemically fried fried fat foods that we all that we are uh, otherwise all indulge in. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Scott. What, what were you going to ask me? Oh, yeah. Here's the issue. She tried one night and before went to bed and had a great night's sleep. So the next day she's like, a little bit was good. Let me try more. Okay. And she tried a whole lot more and ended up, um, it never tasted salty to her. So she kept putting more and more salt in. Interesting. To the point where she ended up doing like a salt water flush. Okay. Um, but what happened? It still never tastes salty to her. So um, just one word of warning of too much salt can cause a flush unexpectedly. Well, what do you so mean by flush? What do you mean by flush? Um, uh, like like um, causing like a diuretic effect. Oh, she had it. She went to the bathroom a lot from all that salt. Yeah, because it never tasted salty to her. That's so she very had interesting. A very strong, potent salt and drink and drink. You know, uh, what do you mean by potent? How much salt was it? I made a terrible face when I when I tasted it when I got home. I just took a little sip. So you could like taste it, but she couldn't. You water. You could taste right. it, she but taste it. she couldn't taste it. Huh. Yeah, I still tasted delicious to her and tasted incredibly salty, saltier than seawater to me. Well, that's very, very interesting. She must have really, really been using that salt somehow. But then she had she had a diuretic effect from. She went to the bathroom, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You lose water weight. You know, it may uh, be that she needed right. it. Now, what's going on with her? Does she have a blood sugar issue at all? 
I, I'm pretty sure she has a blood sugar issue, uh, thyroid issue, adrenal issue. Okay, um, gotcha. Constellation of symptoms. Um, the last thing we're dealing with right now is this, I've gotten to uh, tooth decay and hair loss. How old so is she? kind of really spurned her to go on to think she's 38. No way. Scott, you got to get going on this. She's too young. Way too young. I know. I know. So, I know. It, so, so what's up? You know where it all starts, right? In the digestive system. That's the first thing you got to focus on. The blood sugar is definitely going to be involved, and sounds like you know about the adrenal thyroid link. Are you a healthcare? You're not a healthcare professional, are you? No, just been listening to you and passing your advice along. Okay, well, it sounds like you know some stuff. I would personally, if it was me though, I would be focusing on the gut. That's especially if you've got that hypothyroid thing going on. It could be Hashimoto's, which is most most thyroid involves some degree of autoimmunity, and that always means the gut. So I would be really focusing on the gut. Why don't you get her on a Swero V cleanse? Are you doing longevity? Um, no, we're a little tentative buying things online. So we've um, live in Austin, so we have lots of access to health uh, products. So she's doing um, probiotics. Um, How just is she fasting at all? Days ago. You get her, can you get her? Can you get her to do a fast? Um, sure. Yeah, that, she has a very strong willpower. So fasting that would, uh, wouldn't be. Wouldn't be yeah, that would be awesome. If you can get her to do a fast for a, a couple of days, two days, and then when she starts eating again, pay really, really close attention to what she's eating and her, her body's responses, and then focus on liquids, liquid nutrition, that is um, a bone soup or bone broth protein if you want to use uh, our protein powder at brightsidehealth.com, uh, whey protein if she can do that, uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, get a Vitamix if you can get a Vitamix and do vegetable juices. So focus, give her a two-day fast, and then start to pay attention to all her bodily responses and try to get as many foods that she's eating and then try to get as many of her calories from uh, liquids. That would be my suggestion to you. But it sounds like you're, it sounds like you know what you're doing there, Scott. Good job, man. What do you do? Um, what kind of work do you do? You. What kind of work do you do? I'm an engineer. I'm an oh, engineer. Very cool. engineer. Very cool. That's yeah. good because this is all troubleshooting. That's what we're talking yeah. about here. It's this is all right. engineering. This is body engineering. Is everything we talk about on this program? It's just you know if you have a problem in, in the computer world or in the electrical engineering world, you troubleshoot, you backtrack, right? And that's basically yep. what we're doing here. So that's probably why you like this stuff. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much for calling. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. All right. Take care. Have a great day. All right. That's all the time we have for today on the bright side. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about the ketogenic diet. We'll tell you how to get going. I'm sorry. Tomorrow we'll be talking to Jordan Rubin about uh, about bone broth protein and about digestive health, and then about probiotics as well. Jordan, as, as many of you know, is an absolute brilliant, brilliant, brilliant digestive specialist. He's not medically trained necessarily, but he he cured himself of Crohn's disease, uh, even though he had been on medic, uh, medical protocols and medical therapy and drugs and everything else for years, it, he actually had to cure himself and he did it with probiotics and understanding the digestive system. We're going to be talking about bone broth protein tomorrow. And then after that, we'll talk about the ketogenic diet, ways to get started with it, and also some nutritional supplements that you can want to know about if you decide you want to leverage this amazing way of eating the ketogenic diet. Please check out brightsidehealthproducts.com and check out our bone broth protein as well as truthtreatments.com if you want to check out our truth skin health products. And if you want to join the Longevity team, I'd love to have you on the Brightside Ben team, call 866 735 2470 or head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and sign up right from the website. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.